Okay class, so we have been working on the sinusoid, the general sinusoid form. And the last time I've left off on the videos, uh, we got into the discussion about how this represents time, or the h value and the x values are representing time in a time shift. Well, I didn't end it very clearly at the end, and so I want to look at an example with you again of a possible Ferris wheel with the, the modifications done in the general sine function. I also want to note that what I've written right now is actually an incorrect writing. So I'm going to go why it's incorrect and explain what should be there instead. So bear with me as we work through some of the parts here. Um, this part in the front of the general sinusoid represents the amplitude of a sine wave, but it's also the radius of a circle. So if I were to describe a possible Ferris wheel having all these modifications, I could begin by saying that I know this Ferris wheel has a radius of 20 units. Now for the sake of this example, let's call that unit feet. So this will be 20 feet. All right, the next component I want to focus on is actually this end point. I'll come back to the things inside of the sine function, but this point over here is representing a vertical translation. The original sine curve actually starts off at zero and has a midline at zero. Okay, that's the original sine curve. But if we add something like 25, that's going to give us a vertical translation of 25 units up. So in this case, 25 is referencing the center of the sine curve, the center of the midline, which is also the center of the circle. So I could say that this is a radius or has a circle centered at 25. Now we'll go to the inside. Um, for the sake of measurement here, let's let the time that we're discussing be in seconds. This value right here, the B value, this represents the angular velocity, which I sometimes refer to as angular speed, the difference being a vector notation or non-vector. Velocity would have to have a direction as well. Um, but for our sake, well, we're going to call this velocity. And so that velocity right there, the B value, would be this whole 2 pi over 24. What that's telling us is that we can go 2 pi radians every 24 seconds. 2 pi radians is a full circle. It's like completing a full circle or full cycle. That happens in 24 seconds. So this information also tells us right now that there is a period of 24 seconds. So I'm going to write two things down. I'm going to write down that the angular velocity is 2 pi radians per 24 seconds. But from that, I also know that the period of the function will be 24 seconds. So at this point, we've put together all of the pieces that deal with angular speed, the center of the circle, the radius. But there's this last component in the Ferris wheel type problems. It determines where we start on the circle. So I'm going to go into that for a moment here. Uh, normally, on our sine curves, we've been starting off right here. Okay, that's our initial starting position, and we rotate counterclockwise as we go around the circle. Well, sometimes we want to think about the Ferris wheel as being loaded from a different location. Uh, most of the time, if you consider the fact that Ferris wheels don't take you beneath ground, uh, we would actually move the center point up so it's off the ground. So in that case, that's the adding the 25 piece that's now above the ground. But if you're above the ground, it would be awfully hard to get on the Ferris wheel at that location it would make more sense for us to get on the Ferris wheel at the bottom. Okay? So what we do is we try to accommodate for that. Well, if you think about what position you've changed, you've changed position by going this way, clockwise, by a radian measure of pi over 2. 90 degrees is the same as pi over 2, so this is that pi over 2 direction. So that's an angle measure that we've changed by. Well, in the formula, you can see here that I've included a clockwise change of pi over 2. Pi over 2 would shift this graph over to the right pi over 2 units, so it would allow the graph to start off at the bottom and go all the way through. Something like that, which is where we would board and go clockwise, counterclockwise through the rotation. However, if I were to graph what I see here right now, I would not see this graph starting off at the bottom. It wouldn't show that correctly because we have a problem. We have two variables that are incompatible with each other. This pi over 2 is representing an angle measure currently. We are talking about moving this over pi over 2 clockwise, making the phase shift go counter or clockwise 90 degrees. That's a direction, an angle direction. This 
parentheses set where the x minus this piece has to represent a time. X is time. So I can't take an angle measure away from time. It doesn't make any sense. So if I want to keep this part to be a phase shift, it has to have the same type of measurement. It has to be in time as well. So I still want a quarter of a circle, but I want that quarter of a circle in terms of the time. This circle completes a full revolution in 24 seconds. That was our period. The 24 seconds is the full revolution. One fourth of that would read 24 divided by four, which equals six seconds. So if I want to start at the bottom and not at this midway point, I've got to adjust my whole graph over the six seconds. So the correction to this would actually have to include subtracting six seconds. Now our units match. Time for x in seconds, this quarter turn in seconds. If you graph this, it will now show up with a quarter turn starting at the bottom. The shift has made the correction to see a full cycle start at the bottom and end at the bottom in 24 seconds.